friends and fellow driver of the Transporter 828 here. So look, here's something that I wanted to tell you before and uh, I, I almost forgot, but I just remembered. So I'm out here, uh, it is 56 degrees. I'm traveling westbound uh, in the Badlands on Interstate 90, headed towards Rapid City. And from there I Hook a left turn, drop down, and work my way down to Interstate 80. Go over to Wyoming uh, and Hot Springs. I go to Hot Springs, South Dakota. Work my way over the pass. Head towards a place called Lusk, L-U-S-K, Lusk, Wyoming. And, you know, there I am. So life will be great. And I get down to 90, Interstate 90, and travel across to uh, Salt Lake City, Utah, because I'm taking a load into the state of California. So here's what I wanted to talk to you about. Interstate 80. Um, I wear this Wyoming hat because Interstate 80 is um, it's a force to be reckoned with. Wyoming is a force to be reckoned with. When you're out here driving trucks and uh, being that transportation specialists that we're all trying to be and some of us already are and some of us still aspire to be that person. Interstate 80 has its own characteristics just like Interstate 70 does, just like Interstate 90 does, just like Interstate 10 and 20 do. They do also. Uh, you, you learn these things about where you are, your routes and what's happening, but the characteristics, the lay of the land of where you are, you're going to learn that kind of stuff. Well, Interstate 80, they shut it down a lot, right, uh, in Wyoming. Wyoming is known for high winds, like no two ways about it. 50 mile an hour crosswind is really normal in Wyoming. So, for those of you that are new to this work, Interstate 80 in Wyoming, a 50 mile an hour crosswind is nothing to get excited about. Honestly. Don't get me wrong though, it, you need to respect your elements and what's around you, absolutely positively. If you don't do that, you're going to be in trouble and you're going to be one of the people that you see in the different videos where their trucks are sideways, upside down, facing the wrong way, you know, all that kind of stuff, right? So don't be that guy, don't be that gal, don't be that person that gets themselves tripped up because they don't respect where they are because you have to. Another reason why they shut it down is because of snow and ice. Um, when they shut it down, you want to try to be part of the last group of people to leave wherever you are. Let's say they shut it down and you're at a truck stop. You make it to the truck stop. As soon as you hear that it's open, don't rush out there because the inexperienced people, that's what they do. They run out as soon as they hear that the roadway is open. First thing they do, oh, I got to get out. And they go and take off and run out there. Don't do that. The reason why you don't want to do that is for many, many reasons. Okay? Uh, but the, the overarching reason that you don't want to do such a thing is because of the amount of of inexperienced people who get out there and choose to rush now because they're already hyper because they're late. Oh my gosh, I'm late. I don't know what's going to happen. You know, they've been threatened by or they feel threatened by their management or what have you. And, and so now they don't know what to do and they just take off and start driving like they've lost their minds. 
and then they crash, right? I, I've heard about an individual who uses um, the first stage of his Jake brakes when he's going downhill in snow, okay? That's just a bad idea. Here's why it's a bad idea. Um, when you're in weather like that, when it's the temperature can be such where it's very low temperature, and you could be rolling on ice, and the snow is a fresh snowfall and it's covered the ice. You know, all kinds of stuff could be going on. The reason why you don't want to use your Jake brake on a slippery surface is because you are now taking the brakes, the, the wheel brakes, the axle brakes. You have a set of brakes on your steer axles, a set of brakes on your drive axles, and a set of brakes on your tandems. You do not want to use the Jake brake in that situation where it's a slippery surface. And the reason why you don't want to do that is because the, the Jake brake is an engine brake. I don't know if you know that or not, but when you're using the Jake brake, it's an engine retarder. In other words, what it does is doesn't allow the intake and exhaust valves to operate, the exhaust valves to operate at the full capacity that they normally do and open up as far as they normally do. They retard that opening. They, they close the opening. It doesn't open all the way. And once it doesn't open all the way, that's why you get that that's why you get that sound. And when the revs go up that's what that is. It's the Jake brake doesn't allow the exhaust to flow, the exhaust valves to open all the way. So the engine, along with the transmission, it slows the truck down. It's not using the organic brakes, the brake pads, the brake um, drums, the brake shoes, the brake pads. They're not being used, okay? So now, You've got a 41, 42, 46,000 pound load in the back of your trailer behind this tractor. You're coming down a hill. The hill has a curve and it's got a slant, whichever way the curve is. You've got more weight back there than you weigh up here. And you start to use the engine brake. That load that's behind you has no conscience. It's just going to keep moving forward no matter what's going on in this part, okay? So you don't want to use your Jake brake downhill in the snow. Please stop doing that. Those of you who are doing that and are watching this video, understand that physics are capable of killing you. You need to understand that. It's quite possible that you get a trailer jackknife and the reason why you do is because the trailer wants to move faster than the tractor. Do you understand what I'm saying? The trailer wants to keep going even though the tractor says, okay, we're going to slow down now. So this is why you want to make sure of another thing that you, besides that you don't use your Jake brake going downhill in the snow and ice and inclement weather like that. The other thing you don't want to do is um, have your trailer tandems weigh more than your tractor drives, your tractor tandem. Well, we won't call them tandems up here even though that's what they are. We call those your steer axles up front, your drive axles are on the tractor, and tandems are on the rear, okay? So to keep it simple, we call those tandems back there on the trailer, and your drive axles, we call that, that's right here on the tractor. You want your drive axles to have more weight on them than your tandems do, because if you don't, once again, you increase the odds of that trailer coming around, coming around on you, and messing you up.
that's how you get trailer jackknives. And I'm sorry that there are a lot of people who don't understand this. I don't know why people aren't telling them this. I guess it's because they don't teach them this. In, in winter driving, they don't teach them this in a truck driving school. I did not go to a truck driving school to learn how to drive. The truck driving school I went to was that of an owner operator who had over a million accident free miles. I have well over a million accident free miles. Matter of fact, I'm not sure how many accident free miles I actually have, okay? And that's because I've moved from different companies at different times. And um, so you'll see some people who have a sticker on the side of the truck and it says, over two million accident free miles. That's fantastic. And they stayed with that company for that length of time. So that's really cool. You know, nothing's wrong with that. But there's a lot of drivers out here who have a lot of experience. And considering that I started when I started, 1984, 1984, 1984 was when I started driving trucks. 1986, I got my first taste of transcontinental cross-country driving, right? By 1987, I had purchased my own big rig. It was a Kenworth, baby. Yeah, we ain't playing. But no, I, I got a Kenworth and, um, and a reefer. And as a matter of fact, back then, a 53-foot trailer was a new thing. So, you know, you, you kind of want to, you might want to listen up and hear what I have to say about certain things. So, by all means, make sure, now some people think that when you say you want your drives to weigh more than the, the tandems, and what they're thinking that means is, oh, so the 60-40, you have more weight up front than you do in the rear. Well, that's just pretty much how it should be anyway, but that's not what I'm talking about. Sometimes... A, you can have a load in your trailer and your gross weight is 70,000 pounds, but you've got the majority of that trailer weight on the tandems. That's not what you want. You want more of your weight on your drives, okay? I'm not saying that you're supposed to be overweight over your 34,000 unless you have a permit to be so. Over, over that 34,000 or that 12.5 up front. Um, you can't be that way unless you have a permit. But what I am saying is you want your drive axles to be heavier than your tandems. Okay, and make sure that's what you do. All right, so you've heard that. You're hearing what I have to say as far as that goes. You heard what I had to say about using the jake brake going downhill please use it all day long when it's dry out use it all day long when it's the temperature is high and it's wet okay if you want to use it then that's cool too you know you're not going to lose anything you're not going to get out of control you know just because it's raining and it's 80 degrees outside and you're in the rain you're not going to really hydroplane and all that kind of stuff right a lot of people think that they will and no, you won't. Um, it, you you have to respect the road that you're on. If you don't respect your roadway and where you're traveling, you're going to cause problems for yourself. And in the process of causing problems for yourself, you're going to cause problems for others. This truck will not stop when it runs into a building. It's going to keep going. It's going to keep going through the building. Do you understand that? Okay? So... That trailer has a mind of its own. You're going downhill, you start telling this part that you're in that this is what you want to go slower, and you start to turn. The back of that's going to be like, nope, I didn't get the memo, I'm going forward. I don't know what you're doing, and here it comes. You start to see your trailer in one of your mirrors, now you know what you're dealing with, okay? All right, that's another story for another time. Uh, what to do when you get a trailer jackknife. When that trailer starts coming around, it 
one of these mirrors. Dun dun dun! That's when the the suspense music comes up, right? <laughs> but it's not a big deal. You can handle it if you know what to do. And you also have to be aware of the situation that you're in that you may indeed encounter such a thing. So for now, that's all I'm going to say. I think I've said enough. I wanted to keep these videos a lot shorter. 15 minutes is long enough. You guys, I'll talk to you later. Be safe, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.